Welcome to this biofilm Q tutorial. My name is Hannah, and today I will show you how to threshold your biofilms. In previous tutorials, we have already talked about the different steps of segmentation and the cropping and the denoising in particular. Today, we want to see how to pick the correct thresholding method to threshold your biofilm. This thresholding value will determine which part of the image is recognized as cells and which part is recognized as background. In this drop-down menu here, you can see that we have a number of different options that you can use to threshold your image. We will start with the manual thresholding to show you how this works. So for the manual thresholding, you pick one manual value for each image. In this part down here, determine threshold visually, you can have a look at what your segmented biofilm would look like. You can choose to either perform this thresholding on the raw image, so the preview will be on the raw image, which is more noisy, however much faster, or if you want to first apply the cropping as well as thresholding to get a more accurate result. We will use the second option, and by clicking on this button, We can open an author view that shows us how the segmented biofilm would look like. In this case, everything that's blue corresponds to background and all the grayscale pixels correspond to cells. We now have a view of one slice of the biofilm here in the middle. We can scroll through the different slices with a mouse wheel. And on the sides, we have sides views of our biofilm. We can now see how the thresholding is applied. If you're not happy with this thresholding, you can change it either with a slider down here, or you can pick a new value for this text field and apply it by clicking Enter. And now the slider will jump to this position. Once you close this auto view, the number that you have chosen down here in the threshold will be applied and appear in this window here. We now have chosen a threshold for one image. We could go through each of the images and pick one threshold for each of them individually, but we could also choose to apply this one threshold for all of the images. However, sometimes you have a long time series and the intensity changes over time. In these cases, you would like to apply an automatic thresholding algorithm. There are a number of different automatic thresholding algorithms that we have in Biofilm Q. All of them look similar to this view here. If you select them, you can also select a sensitivity value. This is a factor that will be multiplied with your threshold in case you always want to have it a little bit higher or a little bit lower than the value that would be calculated by the algorithm. Here I have, for example, chosen the riddler calvert algorithm. And when I open the author view again, you can see the threshold result, where the sensitivity is now displayed in this text field here and represented by the slider. So exactly as I did before, I can now adjust the sensitivity by moving the slider or by adding a value into this text field. And again, if I close this auto view, the value I have chosen for the sensitivity will be applied to this text field. The other automatic thresholding options work the same way with one exception, which is the OTSU thresholding. In this case, we have one additional drop-down menu where we can choose how many classes we want in our thresholding and which class is going to be foreground and which class background. When is this useful? In our image, for example, you can see that we have some cells that are brighter than others. In this case, we can use also with three classes. We can choose to either assign the second class to foreground or to background. Let's see what this would look like. I will now open the author view for both cases.
and put them next to each other so that you can see the difference. Here you can see that in the option where I have chosen the second class to be assigned to background, only the very brightest cells are recognized as cells and everything else is background. However, if I choose that the second class should be foreground, then everything in the second class, which now corresponds to all the darker cells, will be recognized as cells. So depending on your image and depending on your question, you can use this three class OTSU thresholding in order to get better results for your images. So now that we have learned how to threshold our images, if you have already gone through all of the other processing steps and chosen appropriate settings, we could segment our images by clicking on segment cells up here. Further processing steps are explained in additional tutorials, as well as the other general processing steps of image analysis.